So today we have my 5.7 liter American V8 and I'm gonna be rebuilding it. There's nothing wrong with it, but I wanna rebuild it to refresh it, maybe get a little bit more power out of it and definitely get more reliability out of it. Just a general rebuild, general refresh, and we're gonna get started and also, Texas Speed. All the parts are going to be from Texas Speed. And now, you're watching the I officially hold my breath whenever I walk by anybody in public like it's going to do anything channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another video. So like I said, right here, my LS1 5.7 liter V8. This came out of a 2004 Pontiac GTO and we're actually putting it in my 1988 Honda Accord. But this video is not gonna be about that even though it goes in line with my build series. This video is gonna break down exactly what I'm gonna do to refresh this motor. And Josh, are we going for the biggest, highest horsepower, or what do you think? No, I mean, I think any horsepower number is fine. Like, as far as like getting out of LS, I think people get all caught up, right, in like the numbers. And, you know, everyone on the internet is like shooting for a number, like, oh, I need 500 horsepower, or 800 horsepower. I mean, to me, like, reliability and drivability and, you know, just making a, a, a number on this will be perfect, especially for this, you know, what does this thing weigh? You know, 2,400 pounds? Right, so we don't care what it makes. What we care about is we want it to be reliable, and if we pick up a little bit of power along the way, that's cool too. And also, we want, we're gonna be putting a cam in it because you need that, the thump from the cam. Yeah, I mean, I mean a mild cam, but just to wake it up like a lot of people do. Um, we're not going anything crazy, but Right. I don't so, think you need to. So I think what we're going to start with, we'll start taking down the accessory drive. We'll get the belt off, power steering bump off, power steering pump off, alternator off. We'll focus on the front half first, and then we'll start working from the top down. So we ran into a little issue. Well, it wasn't so much as an issue, more so something that we had to overcome. And for you DIY guys at home doing this, so this is the crank pulley puller tool. And the way that it works is a rod goes into there, right there. And then this, if you can see, so the crank pulley would be on. That goes all the way into there. And then this as it tightens. But the problem that we were having the problem that we are having is this rod is too short and we just rented this kit from one of the local auto parts store. I'm not gonna say the name, but it was a zone with automotive stuff. Um, so what I ended up doing, this is just a standard 12, just a 12 from a Honda, 12 millimeter bolt M, whatever it is, it's a 12. So I cut off the head, I put that in there, and then that gave me a little bit more of a throw for this rod to go a little bit deeper and that's exactly what we needed. And then that still wasn't quite enough. So at the very end, I just put a 12 right here. And it's a little bit sketchy to have this wobble around, but that was just the very last little bit that we needed. And you can actually see the impression that it left right in the center. So I know it was pretty good, pretty dead center. That's what we had to do. So if you're going to rent a kit, make sure it has either a longer rod or if it doesn't, because this is all they had, just throw a 12 in there and that'll give you the extra throw that you need to get that crank pulley ripped right off.
So now that we got the heads off, the next thing that we want to go into is getting the valve springs out, getting the actual valves out as well. So we're just gonna compress these down and I just have a little compressor tool. I just rented this at the auto parts store as well. I actually do not prefer this style, but this is what they had. This will work as well. So we're just gonna make do with what we have. Get the valve springs out, get the valves out, and then we'll go into detail on actually how to kind of reseat or cleaning the valve seat itself. Reseating, cleaning the valve seat. So I have the valve right here, and like I was saying, we're just gonna go ahead and put it in. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of assembly lube on there. Even though this isn't the final assembly, I just want it to go in there nice and smooth, turn it around, and then after this is in here, I take my, this is just valve grinding compound. So just take a little bit. I figured that was maybe a little much. And then just put it right on this edge right there. Then we can pop that in there. And then this is a tool that I bought online and you're actually just supposed to put your hands on this and kind of old school start a fire type way, but this, this works. So then you just put that right there. Then you can just let that ride for a little while. And then once you wipe that off, you're gonna see that surface. All of those nasty deposits that were on there are completely gone. And then if you can see in here, it looks a little dirty, but then as soon as you wipe it away, come back to me. So now the surface that's in there and the surface that's right here is perfectly matched to one another. And in my opinion, that's the best way to do it to have your valve seated properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these knocked out. Then we're gonna go ahead into actually doing the valve springs and everything else with this motor. So now at this point we actually crossed a bridge and that bridge is we're no longer taking stuff off. Now we can start to put some of the new stuff together and like I mentioned at the beginning of this video that new stuff, all of this stuff I got from Texas Speed so the next thing we want to address is we want to go ahead and throw the valve seals on there and speaking of Texas Speed they were nice enough to kind of send me a care package, got a hat, lanyard, some of this stuff super cool. So these are the actual valve springs, retainers. And then we gotta go and get these seals smacked on right there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on there just because that's a little extra precaution just because it's rubber in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those put on and then we'll go into how I actually do the valve springs. And then we're just gonna keep rolling. Now, as far as putting the valve strings back, I found that this, this tool worked to take them out, but to put them back, I don't like it. So what I did is I just ended up whipping up this hillbilly bar and it's nothing too fancy or anything. It's just over here, if you can see, a fork going this way, a gusset in between, and then a long bar coming up here. And the reason why this bar is so long is so that way you can have a lot of leverage. And as I push, we're getting down there and then it just has to get far enough for us to slide those little half circle shims, whatever you want to call those. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do.
man, so we are just moving through it. It is actually the next day now, and what we went ahead and did is we actually just kept pulling stuff off the motor. We have the cam out, the lifters out, everything is looking really nice, and also we got this all pretty clean. We're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna give it a final wipe down before we actually put the heads back on, but overall it is looking it is looking like a new motor. I'm definitely excited for this. So if you can see right here, we have the old cam right there, obviously, and then the new cam also by Texas Speed, of course. So basically Texas Speed everything, like I said in the beginning of the video. And then also here, we got the dual valve springs back in, the retainers, everything looking super nice. And a lot of this stuff we just went through and cleaned up. And also the lifter tray is just sitting in here now all cleaned up so you can see it. Valve stem seals in there looking really nice. And then what else? We have the old lifters and then the new lifters. Josh, what do you think about this stuff? It's really good. Like one thing about these lifters, these are the original GM ones um, and they were great, but they're, they're real weak right in here. And a lot one of the pitfalls of the original, the first gen LSs um, is that they would break right in here. Um, so these were good. Um, but then the aftermarket kind of started making these um, and we can kind of see the, see the big difference here um, and all the strength that's in between these two, uh, you know, these two sides, so to speak. Um, you know, the aftermarket started doing this and then GM started doing that as well. Um, just a lot more strength in here. Um, just going to make it a lot more reliable, you know, a lot more for uh, doing burnouts and getting rowdy with it. Exactly what we want. Right, exactly. That's one of the things that Texas Speed actually recommended. Those are LS7 style lifters, so they recommended we went with that. That was one great thing about working with Texas Speed. I kind of just told them what I wanted to do, and I'm not extremely knowledgeable on this stuff. They just formulated a list of everything that they think that I should have for what I'm going to be doing with the car. And here we go. The next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna get this cam thrown in there. So a nice amount of assembly oil. And this little piece right here is actually where you line up the timing gear. So this is all super straightforward stuff. Josh, I think I'm gonna go with a little more, you think? Yeah. Can't ever have too much, right? All right, so let's just mash it in there. That's it, that's all she needs. So now at this point, it's just a matter of basically putting everything back together. Once the cam is in, now everything else, the lifters we can throw back in. I got new trays also, Texas Speed hooked it up with the trays as well. And then we got a new timing chain and we're just gonna keep rolling. Man, so we are just powering right through this. We got everything together, the front cover back on. And one thing that I heard before, one thing that I know of is these bolts, they can't be completely tightened down until the actual crank pulley goes on there. So those aren't tight for the final time, like I said, until the crank pulley goes on there. And then we'll tighten them down to spec. Every single thing that we were doing along the way, we just did them to spec. And I have a little sheet on my phone, a little document that just gives us all the specs from GM that everything is. But I figured I'd leave that out in the video, but just let you know that. So as we're wrapping it up, the last thing that I want to do now I know you guys probably have never ever seen me with a rattle can, but we're just gonna go rattle can special on this one. It doesn't need anything more than that. It doesn't even really need it. It already looks really good, but we're just gonna hit it with that to make it look a little bit better. Yeah, this stuff is weird. 
Like you can barely even see it. Like yeah. it doesn't act like paint at all. But it does its thing, yeah. Yeah. Like a, a cover. Yeah. Yeah. Dang man, that looks so good. This is exactly how I wanted the motor to look. I wanted to put a little bit of extra time in it just to make it look just to make it look good. Also, we have some kind of like black dress up hardware that's gonna be going on there as well. And I'll get a lot more into that as we're finalizing everything. I still have all of the accessory drive to worry about. I still have a bunch of brackets to paint, a bunch of other things, also a bunch of gaskets that I gotta do. But mainly in this video, building the motor, everything from Texas Speed. Josh, help me give a run out. So we got the cam. Yeah, I mean, obviously it wasn't like a full build, like every single nut and bolt of the tire engine, but I think we really hit like the real, uh, you know, the real, uh, good parts you know to, to to rebuild but yeah cam you know we've got to add some power right um valve springs retainers lifters valve stem seals i mean those are like the major things and there's a bunch of other miscellaneous gaskets and things that they sent you as well right exactly like timing chain and then just oh, yeah. different gaskets all oil the pump right oh yeah the oil pump and then we also did the push rods as well and the motor the motor's just kind of sitting together i actually didn't finalize it the heads are just sitting there i got to do the head gaskets and everything and actually put the push rods in there i just wanted to put it all together for me to see it and also so that way i can show you how it sits but as of right now as of today it's getting late and as of this video it's been a long one so i think that's going to be it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much to texas speed for all the parts all the support if you guys need anything ls wise make sure you go over there hit up texas speed they will definitely help you out and then some they did that with me i know for sure they're going to do that with you so thank you guys so much for watching like this video comment subscribe do all the stuff you know what it is youtube i'll see you on the next one josh we out we out